Okay. So what I want to talk about today are actually airplanes, the privilege of flight, and some of the experiences I've had and the uh, exceptional people I've met over 23 years in aviation. And my hope is that if you have the dream of flying, that you actually go after that and learn to fly. Um, the most amazing thing to me is that airplanes fly at all. <laughs> and I have a degree in physics, and I understand the aerodynamics of all this, and every time I fly as a passenger in an airliner or the pilot of a small airplane, it is amazing to me that these things actually do move through the air. I've been into aviation since I was, I was very little. Here's me in the left seat of a 727 when I was nine years old with my co-pilot sister in the right seat. And uh, I built my first model airplane, Styrofoam, when I was three. And I learned how to fly starting in 1986. And this is my first flight instructor, Iris Critchell, one of the most amazing people. She is still alive. She'll be turning 89 next month. She still flies. Born in 1920, her dad took her to uh, an air show in 1928 that um, Charles Lindbergh was performing in. She was also an exceptional athlete, and she uh, swam on the U.S. Olympic swim team in 1936. And she was the uh, women's 200-meter breaststroke champion for the U.S. from 1936 through 39. Uh, after that, she uh, got her pilot's license, joined the military, and flew as a WASP uh, in World War II. So she ferried all these airplanes, um, which those of us who are pilots in the room would give anything to fly for one hour. She has thousands and thousands of hours in these uh, for a couple of years. Um, just an amazing woman and a true inspiration. And she's the one who taught me that flying is truly a privilege and it's available to all of us. Uh, that's the airplane I actually learned to fly in, 7642 Golf. That's the airplane that she signed off my pilot certificate in. And she still owns that airplane and flies it every single week at 89 years old. She's so sharp in the mind, she talks as fast as a 19 year old. It's just <laughs> astounding. That's where I learned to fly in the Los Angeles basin. The airport I learned to fly was Brackett Field at the kind of top right corner. And there's Ontario Airport on the right, LAX on the left, and uh, uh, John Wayne Airport at the bottom. So I learned how to navigate very complex airspace and I got very good at talking on the radio. It's the only way to survive. This is the, uh, the cockpit of a Cessna 152. Notice all the round dials. It's a two-seat trainer. I have a lot of time teaching in these. And if you learn to fly, you might learn in either a 172 or a 152 like these two airplanes. Uh, but time marches on and this is what I teach in now, Beechcraft Bonanzas. That's the single engine version. I also teach in Barron's, which is the twin engine version. And what I do is I do recurrent training for people that own these airplanes. And I'm part of a company that does uh, 11 recurrent training courses across the country each year. We have 60 pilots fly to these classes for each weekend. And uh, that's about a third of one of the atten um, attendants at one class. And so we do emergency procedures and all the things that they need to do to stay proficient and fly these high-end airplanes. It's a lot of fun. I get to meet a lot of really cool people and fly some uh, really nice equipment. This is the new era. So all the beach bonanzas and barons built in the last three years since 2006 have glass cockpits. Remember those round dials? They're all gone now. Two flat screens, that's all we've got. So forget it's in the computers and flying. This is just heaven. Totally <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, Adventures, that's my sister, Regina. Some of you may know her as project manager for Code Geek. And um, she came to visit earlier this year, and a friend and I took his airplane to pick her up at Denver and fly back to Fort Collins. Just a fun thing to do. And we had some adventures along the way. Uh, we got to taxi right by all the airliners. And in fact, they made a stop on the taxiway, and they taxied two Frontier A319s around us. <laughs> a different animal indeed. <laughs> and we got to taxi underneath the, uh, the sky bridge, which you've all had a chance to walk across from the terminal. So that was a pretty cool experience. So if you choose to fly, you can do these kind of things yourself. Um, going back to 1985, when I graduated high school, The Dream is a Lie was an IMAX movie that inspired me. And I actually gave a speech at my high school graduation entitled uh, The Dream is Alive. And this next photograph is of George Pinky Nelson, who was flying the MMU man maneuvering unit in that movie. Um, and for real, of course. And uh, it turns out he was a Harvey Mudd graduate, which I did not know at the time. And that's where I was headed for college, was Harvey Mudd College. So I had the great fortune to meet him later and spend a bit of time with him. And last year, he and I and four other authors uh, co-authored a white paper together. And this is uh, Stan Love. He was two years ahead of me at Harvey Mudd and uh, just flew last year on the shuttle and was working on the International Space Station. So it's, uh, it's a great opportunity to meet some really interesting people, and that's just a sampling. Um, right now, we live in a really unique period in human history. Aviation was only invented 100 years ago, and it's not going to last that much longer. 25 to 50 years down the road, you can see the automation already coming from that glass panel airplane. Uh, the automation is so significant that uh, 25 to 50 years down the road, even general aviation will be fairly automated and we won't be doing much at the controls ourselves. So if you have the desire to learn, it's not just a unique time in your life, this is truly a tiny window in all of human history where you get to fly airplanes. We have the freedom in this country and the space and the, the time to actually go and fly wherever you want. Just an awesome experience. So if you have that dream, 
I hope that you take it. Thanks very much.